Crowdcast. Um, I'm your host, Cameron McLennan. I am part of the uh, the growth team at Firefish Software. Um, today, we are going to have a chat about the importance of um, good branding um, and recruitment. Uh, I'm very, very lucky to be joined by uh, Sean Anderson, the CEO of uh, Hoxo Media, um, who's uh, very kindly given up some of his time today to, to come on as a guest. Sean, just before we actually get into the questions, can you um, tell the audience a bit about yourself? Sure can, Cameron. Appreciate it, mate. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, You're welcome. So, yeah, some people on the on the call do know me, as you can see, um, and others probably don't. So, um, really, to give you a quick o overview of myself, um, I've been a recruiter myself since 2011, or was a recruiter since 2011. Um, started off my career in Australia. I was a I was a school teacher in the UK who went travelling um, at the age of 24, 25, and didn't know where I was ending ending up landed in Melbourne and thought, all right, well, I don't know what to do now because my qualification wasn't valid. Uh, two nights later, I met a lot of English and Irish lads in a bar one night. I think there might have been a Scotsman there just for you. Uh, <laughs> and they, uh, they were throwing money around. They were, they were talking about how they could live there for four years. And I was thinking, what on earth is this? How are they not picking fruit like everyone in my hostel? Um, anyway, cut a long story short, I, a couple of days later, I started picking up the phone in, in my own hostel and BD'd myself into Randstad. Um, and I had a, I got a 457 visa there. I did a couple of years in, in Melbourne. And then I, uh, I came back to the UK when I was about 26 to ultimately set myself up in recruitment and work for an organization where I could see myself growing and, and building a career and an agency with, with backing and support from some, some good owners. So I joined um, a business transformation recruiter called Venquist um, at the time with about six, seven people. Um, I think now they're about 52 over, over three locations. So um, I joined them in 2011. I worked with them for just under five years. Um, I did all right in in uh, my time. I was a contract recruiter into the insurance. Um, I did just over 700 grand in the third year on my own and then became a manager um, and ultimately became a leader of a team. I think I, I left with about seven direct reports. Um, and my story is that I was always set to set up a recruitment company, right? Like you would imagine the, yep. top, the top biller story. Um, I can do it myself and, and can take the mission and all the rest of it. Um, and so about 18 months before setting up, I, me and my partner, um, who's also a Hoxha Media partner now, um, we, we met with a branding guy, a guy I grew up with, someone I trusted, to, to have yep. a conversation a little bit like this, to say, look, um, I've worked in an agency that went from having no marketing to some marketing to very good marketing. I knew how, how valuable that could be. Um, and I knew there was going to be yeah. a couple of us in a room, as many startups are. Um, and I didn't want to be reliant on just picking up the phone. Um, I wanted to get, I love social media from a personal perspective. So I thought, Do you know what, how can I use stuff like that in, and, and make more money quickly and um, not be as reliant mm -hmm. on, because I know that's just not how busy it can be. So we had a conversation with the guy, the, the marketing guy, we, he basically just gave me like a bit of a straw and diagram of the things he, we should do. Um, and I was really excited. I mean, really, really excited to the point where after a couple of weeks of speaking to him, I thought to myself, I'm a little bit more excited about that than setting up a recruitment company, which is dangerous when you're about to quit your job. Um, so uh, over a period of time, about three, four months, I thought to myself, I'm, I must be quite a good barometer for the current recruitment market. Um, if I'm this excited about it, then there's got to be plenty of recruitment agencies out there as well, but uh, small to medium sized organizations who may or may not have a marketing team that would, would love to um, have the experience of someone like myself from a recruitment perspective, but also added with a marketing expert. And that was the idea of, of Hoxo. Hoxo was originally going to be called a recruitment company, just called Hoxo. Um, but as we yep. decided to, to launch a recruitment specific marketing agency, we call it Hoxo Media. Um, so that, that started wow. at the beginning of the year. We, we started in March. Um, we, we quickly grew an agency of, of creative people. So we've, it's not just myself and this marketing guy running around. Uh, there's three, three directors <laughs> um, and we've built a, a creative function. So we've got graphic designers, videographers. You may see in the background, there's a guy running around with a camera. Um, we film everything yep. pretty much what we do every day. Um, and we've got website guys, we've got copywriters, we've got SEO guys. Um, we've got myself and, and Amar, one of my, the CEOs, CEO is an ex recruiter as well. Um, and we've got the marketing director yep. and we've got three marketing execs under him. So ultimately we are full service agency that you'd get from a marketing perspective, but also driven by the recruitment knowledge that we've already got 
to work with organizations agencies to actually add some value um not yeah yeah not yeah. spend the first three months trying to work out what the hell you do for a living but we get that we know yeah, that yeah. we've been there it's about then how do we translate all the great ideas you've got and all the business strategy you're trying to achieve and underpin that through social media through the the marketing stuff that we can we can deliver so does that does that answer enough and give you enough of what you're looking for yeah mate. it's really good it's good as well that you've got the you've come from the recruitment background as well so when you're sitting there having a conversation with an agency owner or whatever you've been there done it you know the challenges that they're facing day to day just around the business it's as well, so, it's so it's not um i think i've found that as well a lot of the people in in the marketplace have either they're either still in recruitment or they've been out of it for a long time and i think we kind of bridge that gap mm -hmm. a little bit we kind of fill a bit of a void where it was only last year um that we're in yeah. so it's so fresh yeah. uh, i guess that'll change over time yeah. as well yeah, definitely um so for you then like what is um what is a recruitment agency brand what is a recruitment agency brand branding is one of those words where typically it can i mean it's everyone it means different things to different people um ultimately to me it's yeah. not sales all right it's not transactional sales it's about how it could be a personal brand or a company brand but brand is how how is how are you perceived by the person who either hears or sees your your name um, and that's both factual and emotional so um, mm -hmm. a brand is something that lasts in the marketplace and is um, yeah is is what people think of you and I, I always again it goes back to my recruitment days I always I was taught from an early age that perception is bigger than intent is more powerful than intention so it doesn't matter how you come across mm -hmm. to someone or you, you intend to come across to someone that client or that candidate or anyone in life how you're perceived is the most important bit because all make their decision based on how they perceive it not based on how you intended it because you don't write that down so your brand is your perception yeah. it's your how do you want people to um to view you and value you brilliant and um do you think having a great recruitment agency brand um makes recruiters jobs um, easier yeah i mean i've worked them. like i say i worked randstad the second biggest in the world and they had a phenomenal brand um i think the biggest biggest impact that had was literally just being able to pick up the phone to anyone and they instantly knew who you were um my previous employment mm -hmm. player brevanquist when we first started off everyone thought we were vanquist bank um but but over time again the investment in the brand especially within a within the space that we were very um very active we, we 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 began to become a very strong brand where people knew knew us for what we did that we were specifically in this area that these were the type of people we hired this is the way that we operated um but ultimately yeah i think a, a good agency brand will will make your, your recruiter's life a lot easier it, it gives them the I mean, a recruiter's job is to reach out to people, to connect with people, to speak to people, to open doors. And if the first barrier of who the hell are you is gone and it's a positive experience that that person's had or a positive perception that person's got of the organization, then straight away you've, you've, you've limited that barrier. But um, as quickly as a brand can be built, it can also be diminished. So it's, a, it is something that, it's not something you build tomorrow and it's done. It's an it's a long term investment. It's an ongoing, um, ongoing investment, and it takes time. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. So if you're sitting here, like watching this today, and you're um, you really run your own agency, or you're part of an agency, that you you've got it's got mm. a poor brand, um, or you're unhappy with your brand, what what advice would you give to someone who's who's not happy yeah, with the brand um, that they've got? I'd say that the first thing to do is go back to basics. So work out. Firstly, who your audience is. So who is the target audience mm -hmm. you're trying to achieve? And for some agencies, especially the more generalist agencies, that's really difficult because there's so many, so many different yep. people at different levels of their career in different industries. But if you're fortunate enough to be a specialist and you have a sector that you're looking to, um, to penetrate and dominate, then first thing I would do is look at defining the audience. Um, and then again, work out how you would want to be perceived by the audience. And then go back, work backwards from that and think what, things can we say and do online and in person but let's talk about it online because that's where our business operates how can we represent online all of as many different ways of showing that we are how we want to be perceived and that's going to be through mm -hmm. building a strategy digitally to um to do that and producing content so um yeah 
and I'm not some. I'm not going to pretend that when I was a recruiter, I was a big content writer because I 100 wasn't. If anything, I was quite the opposite. I did that. I did build big numbers yeah. by doing the classic picking up the phone, WhatsApp, text, meetings, coffees, beers, lunches, all the rest of it. But um, had I now looking at what we do now and how I can reach 50,000 people with one post, or um, I think to myself, had I gone back to my time as a recruiter again and spent time not only doing all of the, the things on a day to day to make money, but also thinking about it and producing content that was not the sales bit because I was doing that, but was the value add it was mm-hmm. there's so many candidates out there that yep. I could have told, look, mate, you're not going to get, you ain't getting that job or you, your CV is not the representation of you, but because I was so busy and trying to chase that next deal. And even though I was very diligent with what I did, I still didn't give everyone that value. I didn't, I didn't have the time to speak to every individual person about that, their individual scenario. But cleverly, I could have wrote down all of these issues and they, were, they, they come up all the bloody time. And then I could have put a content yeah, yeah. plan around it and it could be my specific area or as a business to say, all right, we can't go back to every single person on every single occasion, but we will tell you guys on a, to, to the audience, to the, to the masses, how you can improve or how you can get some value from what we do. Um, so I would think about, um, yeah. I think about producing content, not being a salesperson and having it consistently as part of your, part of your KPIs as part of you, part of what you do. I know a few agencies now that I've met who, yeah. who put content as part of their, their new recruiters KPIs. So CV set, all the rest of it, but yeah. on a monthly basis, they need to produce X amounts of videos or blogs, or even if they're just producing the ideas for their internal content writer. Um, it's, really, it's really important. And then yeah. I'd also look at where's the value. So where's the, where is the value in the marketplace now? Like how do I get a competitive edge? Writing content is really important, but also there are clever ways in which to, whether that's through paid media, whether it's through ads on Facebook or LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Um, we all know about SEO. Everyone knows that search engine optimization is great. And if you're typing in, I want to buy X, then your brand goes to the top of Google. That's phenomenal. But do some research into Facebook ads and LinkedIn ads and they're so cost effective and you're able to hit people before they've even bothered searching in because if they fit that criteria. So if they, you can target people by job title, by age, by demographic, by location, all the areas that you said, identify the people within your audience, you can target yep. your, your content to them. So they don't even need to be a connection or a friend or you can put your content out and it's yep. very cost effective. So, um, It'd be okay. I guess that really starting with a strategy, breaking it down to what content we're going to produce, and then how can we organically and through value-added content get it in front of the right people. Awesome. So I've got a, I've got a couple of questions coming through there. Um, so Tom, uh, Tom Modell's asking like, what what is good content? good content? Um, again, it's a very it, it, that's perception, isn't it? It's very open to. Um, the, the user or the reader, um, in my opinion, content that makes you feel something. So if you, mm-hmm. if you try and work out, we all scroll every single, we're all addicted to this. Let's not pretend we're not right. We're on it every five minutes. We scroll, we scroll, we scroll. How often do you actually like something that you like on social? Pretty rare. You might, ass- yeah. you associate to it. And, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, that was a bit funny. Oh, oh, I know him. Yeah, I like that. Um, oh, he's just starting out. I like that. But reality of actually liking something or feeling some emotion from something is quite rare. So that in, is my yeah. perception of good content. It's something that would make me feel something. Now that might not always be positive. It might piss me off. It might make me feel excited. It might make me feel yeah. ecstatic. It might make me feel sad, but ultimately content that makes me feel something. And that is where the value you've, you've had an emotional yeah, yeah. Connect, connection yeah, to like that, that content. Um, hard to yeah. quantify from exactly. You- it is hard, and I think as well. I think the recruitment industry obviously is all about all about closing, uh, closing, and uh, and uh, and billing. I think um, good content sometimes can be um, should, should be something that adds value to whatever you're doing or your, to your audience. You know, it's got to add value to the uh, to the audience and not be a picture or a sale. Yeah. Um, so we've got another good question coming in here from Hamza. So content writing seems to be the key in inbound marketing, especially if you're responsible to manage brand, market, and digital social media. In your views, how important is it for us to engage in sponsor posts using our own original content? Yeah, I think um, sponsored posts, um, paid media, using 
again, it goes back to the audience that you're trying to capture and the strategy. I think everything I'm going to keep throwing back to you is why, what's the point it, to, to the person who just asked that question or the previous person, they're going to have different markets with different audiences, with different outcomes, different objectives. So it's not a one size fits all. Um, but if you can guarantee that you can, um, you can pinpoint your audience, you know where, I mean, uh -huh. we know that most of ours are on LinkedIn in, in a lot of recruitment scenarios. However, um, yeah. if you do recruit, for example, grads or the younger generation, then they're on Instagram. 50% yeah. of our team at Hoxhill Media, we found through paid ads on, on Instagram. We identified where, which universities and which job titles and which skill sets they would come from. And we also knew that they wouldn't be spending their life on LinkedIn because they wouldn't even have an account on most occasions. So... Yeah. Are very different from a recruiter who spends his life on LinkedIn. We then executed a completely different campaign, video content, testimonials. We got the people we'd already hired in to talk about how good it was, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think the, the whole ad cost like less than a hundred pounds and we hired like four people from it. Um, so some return on investment. But it? it was, again, it was, it was all about the objective and identifying the audience and identifying where they hang out. And um, if paid media in that instance allows you to reach more people faster, and target uh -huh. and track then yeah 100 percent. but if it's you're just boosting posts on facebook because you get a little notification that says oh reach ten thousand people then it's a bit it's all vanity in my opinion i think followers likes comments and gay it's all great but if you're writing about something that's not nothing to do with your, your subject matter um it's not part of a strategy there's no it's not linking to something else um i mean what's the value uh, it just you, yeah. you've got to measure that yeah smashing um quite often as well you know i come across loads of different um <laughs> agency brands on a, on a daily basis and get get the fortunate um, opportunity to speak to lots of people that, that run agencies day to day and quite often people struggle to identify like a unique brand story a lot of the messaging is you know we'll find you know they put themselves out to market saying we can find people that nobody else mm -hmm. can and that sort of thing but everyone says that it's kind of like our um, if, process our unique process to find candidates is just it's yeah, the reality it's is like, unless, so unless you bought some kind of tech product that allows you to yeah. do something different than you and there's stuff out there we know that then it is yeah um i would relay that again back to the personal brand and the what the perception like mm -hmm. genuinely um what how would you want to be perceived and what what makes you you like if you if you own a recruitment company and you share it with a couple of guys i'd work out like what what are your genuine usp what was it about you three that that brought you together what was it about your previous yeah. like for me i told you the story about where i started off um i told everyone that from the day i started in recruitment i told everyone about my past where i'm from what i i just would pour out to people and i, I mean when i first did it i remember people used to think Oh, he's a bit of a big head. He loves talking about himself. And all my uh, my colleagues in recruitment used to think, oh, he just loves talking about himself. And then when the deal started coming in, they were like, well, what's, what are you doing different? I said, well, I actually tell people about myself. Therefore, they tell me stuff back about themselves. Um, and I think uh, yeah. it's, it's a little bit like that with, with your brand. It's going, how much do you tell about yourself and the reality of your business? Like, we're filming this right now, that camera in my face. Um, bloody used to that by now. Um, People see everything we do. Like if you watch Hoxo Live episodes on a weekly basis, they're, I mean, we edit them in terms of to make them attractive, but we don't edit anything out. You don't, you see those laughing and joking and drinking and swearing and attending events. And um, that's what people buy. That's what people connect with. That's what people want to work with. Not a, a company yep. strap line that means, well, means nothing to no one. So um, for me, it'd be about if, you, if you're struggling, you want to build a USP. Go back to who you are as people. What make what makes you a good recruiter, and relay it back to specific examples of, as a person, um, and get that out online. You can only speak to one person at one time, or you can only meet with one person at one time. If you put good quality video content or written content out in the right channels, because you know your audience is there, you can reach thousands in a day. And yeah. if you if you add value over time, and then you you do add a call to action of get in touch, call me, click the link, whatever, then you're driving, you will be driving people to you because of you and because of the things that you've, you, the fans. I know Steve Ward, who yeah. is involved with us, um, who's watching today, he, he's, he's a big advocate of recruit fans, not just candidates or clients, like get yeah. people to buy into. And again, that starts with the people. 
that starts with the people yeah. and it will over time you you hire people that represent the same the same ethics and the same um the same ideology then your business will exude that the same stuff um and it won't be about you individuals yeah. at that point yeah, awesome, awesome. I like that. Steve's just saying there, people, people over punchlines as well. Love it. Um, uh, Douglas is coming in there saying making content with emotion equals yeah, yeah energy and motion, getting them to move. I call to action. Oh, yeah, okay. I like that as well. Um, so in terms of packaging up a brand story into something you can market um, and get a return from, like how would you how would you go about that? Again, I think it, it starts with the it starts with the strategy. It starts with what we're trying to achieve and then you break it down to um, where these people are, what ideas, what, what, we're, what we're trying to achieve. And then we work out, you can work out what ideas you're trying to, you've got from your business collectively that can actually achieve or give value to those people. Um, and that's, we're talking yeah. three, six, nine, 12 months worth of content and worth of ideas here to ensure that over a period of time, you're going to get people from thinking, I don't really know who X, Y, and Z company are, or I remember John, but I don't know about his business To I've seen so many videos and I've seen so many blog posts and I've seen so much content that they subconsciously, they do know who you are. They do know what you represent. They do know what you're trying to achieve. And to package that up, I guess it's got to be about time. It's got to be about effort. It's got to be about your resources and, you, and who, what you can and can't do internally. So if you've got, everyone's yeah. got one of these, I mean, of course, we love to use professional videos and edit to the to the finest and, and try and make things cinematic and all the rest of it. But it makes no difference. Just like if, if I held my phone up and, and if I say the same thing and I say it regularly and consistently, it's going to achieve the same outcome. So every organization can, yep. can build a content plan that involves written content, statuses. I mean, long form blog writing is, is amazing and... Um, if you can write over a thousand words and get people to listen and sorry, read right to the end, I mean, you're very powerful. I think you'll get them as a fan, but the reality of how short yeah. our attention spans now, it's, it's, it takes some real skill. So um, putting regular status updates on your LinkedIn that aren't hot job, contract roll, 500 pound a day, like everyone else <laughs> in the recruitment industry is doing, actually ask questions to your audience, give an opinion. Everyone in, everyone in yeah. your business should give an opinion should have an opinion on what they're doing because otherwise you just, you're trying to please the masses and that, I mean, that's not going to achieve anything, but packaging it up, I would have a, yeah. I'd have a time. I'd have a, I'd have a, what we're trying to achieve as a strategy. I'd have the, the people and the time that we're going to put into it. I'm going to have a weekly or monthly plan as to the, ta the amount of assets we're going to produce and where we're going to put them. And then I'd have some metrics that I want to measure it by. And of course, yeah. followers and, um, Follower growth and engagement is is quite easy to track and manage, but if you're yep. if you do put call to actions in there around click links to to watch videos or to um, mm -hmm. download content etc., then you can start to see how your your audience is engaging with you and you can track that and it also provides you with leads yep. that you can pick up the phone to. The, the, assets, the, the assets is an interesting point. An interesting point because I don't think enough. Um, necessarily enough owners appreciate that it's uh, it's yeah. tough <laughs> it's not easy to, to to get to a point where your your brands manage well and you're you know you're creating a, a real buzz about you it's like quite often it's a oh we'll set an hour aside a week to um to put into mm. this R realistically you know to to get to a point where you've you know you've got a, a decent brand how much how much time and effort do you think that takes i'd say years i'd say years i mean um, look at any business. I mean, you can have short-term success overnight by going on Love Island, but that doesn't make you a celebrity, does it? And that doesn't make you physically talented in any space. That just means you've had 15 minutes of fame. And I think a recruitment company is a mm -hmm. bit like that, that you can have one great year and bill a million pounds, but that million pounds is not going to pay you a million pounds for the rest of your life. Um, it's about <laughs> yeah, it's investing major. in the long term. It takes time. And I think um, if I'm any advice to recruitment owners would be if, if you're happy making money as you are today and picking up the phone and doing all the things you've done, then there's no reason why you should change that. If, that, if you love that lifestyle and you're able to do it and you've got the network, like it's not for everyone to simply flip what they're doing. But if you are trying to grow mm -hmm. a, a business where you're, you want others to come through and 
demonstrate a similar values and, and um, one day not necessarily be physically attached to the phone and have people come into your brand, then starting to produce content and assets and starting to think about how you're represented online from the beginning, I believe it's a bit like saving in a bank. You, you can chip away at it month in, month out with small amounts and the compound effect over time will, will mean that you can step back and you can allow, um, yeah. your brand will outweigh your personal name, which every recruitment agency starts by someone who's got a pretty strong personal brand in the marketplace. I think that's a really interesting point as well you make, Sean, because quite often the, the branding side of it is maybe looked at from, a, well, how can we win new clients and how can we win new candidates or get new candidates? But if you're thinking about scaling your agency and you want to hire good people to allow you to do that, to hit your goals, then, yeah, fantastic advice. Like, brand's going to play a part in you attracting the best caliber of people to allow well, we, you to scale your business, which we, I think is often Yeah, we, 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 work, we work with organizations to look at all three of their audiences and candidates, clients and recruiters. I think where we're getting the most joy and I'll be honest, I think where our business is moving more predominantly is that employer brand to hire new recruiters because um, mm -hmm. we're, there's a heavy reliance on Rectorex for good reason, you know what they do well. And then you've got some innovative products yep. out there like your hunteds and stuff that um, again, provide a, another route to experienced people, but really um, finding good quality recruiters or great quality profilable people and that's possible as well um yeah it's very difficult it's, it, it, it's really difficult to rely on you're relying on someone to be applying for a job at all times they have to be looking for a job they have to be on indeed or read and they have to be picked up by that rector rec whereas through social media and through branding if you can profile the type of people that work well in your organization i mean we we had i'm an ex-teacher we had a few ex-teachers that ex uh, we had ex-royal marines and guys in the military we had uh, some of the best people we had came from premier banking in um like barclays and um, hsbc and there was reasons for all yeah. of those working out as well as we had some experienced people and we had some grads so we probably had four or five higher personas of people that we could profile and then it's about mm -hmm. going right where do these people hang out again what, do they, what are they interested in? And what, over time, is going to attract them directly to our brand? Um, yeah. But also, if they if they do happen to come via a rhetoric or a referral or a hunted, then why are they going to choose us? Well, they're going to look at your website and they're going to look at your social media channels before they come in the door. They are going to... Yeah, that's the thing. Like if, you're, if, you're, if you're talking about that, the fan side yeah. of it, isn't it? If, they, if you don't have content to create fans, then how are you going to do it the If first you place? think today, you can... Well, you can. I know you can. You can rely on a CV coming in and getting in front of them and then speaking for three or four hours and being able to, you know, um, sell yourself really, really well, that will work to a degree. But if you could take people on a journey where before they've even walked into your organization, they've met most of the staff, they've seen the office environment, they know what the, the reality of the job's like, they've seen what incentives you offer, and they know what you represent, they've heard your original brand story, then yeah. if they actually walk in the door, they, they become, they're already a bit of a fan because... Yeah, yeah, and you'll be sure. standing out against your competitors. They'll walk in the door feeling that they know you. I mean, it's like the content we've put out over the last six, seven months. I go to a, a meeting now, and more often than not, recruitment owners will ask me questions about things I've never spoken to them about, but it's because they've watched my videos or they've read what we've written. So um, it's a completely different conversation, but one that... Well, that's, I think how, really that's how we met. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, the video online, and then we decided to catch up uh, for a beer when we were in London. Yeah. I was in London, so yeah, it's, it's the, the power of it's really, yeah. really strong. Um, got a couple of our questions coming through here that we'll just yeah. fire over. So, um, what are your thoughts about competitors replicating your content, um, or taking a, slash taking a lead from your specific value add? Um, I think. Look, if people are going to replicate. I mean, what everything that every recruiter does has been probably done before. They're not. You, what you can't replicate is you. It goes back to that original story again. People. Yeah. But you cannot replicate is your exact culture and your exact story and who you are and why why you are proud to be you and what you do. It's not possible. All the all the uh, ways in which you you market that out. Yes, of course, other people will will jump on. But actually look at it as a compliment if you're already ahead if you're you're yeah. the first mover advantage you're the people that are out there doing it um so yeah. and if you t i could sit here now and give 99 percent of my business plan to everyone on this comcast and anyone in the room and most i'd say 99 percent wouldn't do anything with it because then they're not yeah. you know what i mean it's it, you've got to be in the right space at the right time and have that mindset to actually go out and take something and physically action it um so yeah 
I, th I think it's a risk worth taking. I would say, yeah, I agree. I would say be flattered. And if they're copying you, you're already ahead of them. So just keep doing yeah. what you're doing. Um, and another good one here for, uh, coming as well. So with regards to employer branding, how would you overcome bad customer reviews? Ah, great question. So um, your brand is your people. So for example, if it was um, uh, bad glass door reviews, yeah. that type well, of thing. you've got to ask yourself why. Why are you getting bad reviews? I mean, <laughs> there's something going wrong internally. Like your brand is, if your brand's saying one thing and your people are doing completely different things, then there's nothing your brand can do to fix that. If you're communicating that we're honest and reliable and we are trustworthy and knowledgeable and your consultants are shafting candidates and not replying and sending crap CVs that don't fit the bill, and do you know what I mean? What, what, there's nothing your yeah. brand can do to fix that. You've got to look at the in, internal management of your staff and ensure that, look, guys, this is what we do. This is what we stand for. And go back, it's a training exercise. Um, and ultimately as yeah. well, one of the biggest things about online communication is it is two-way. So when someone writes a negative review, how often do you see someone ac actually go back and respond and, and, mm -hmm. and apologize and say, look, we're, we're sorry you feel this way, but we're working internally to make sure that it doesn't happen again. It's that kind of, so many people, we had a, one of our clients had a, had a, a mailer out. They were, they were sending a mailer out to, to candidates that were quite hard to fill. Um, sorry, they had, they had lots of candidates, but they were, um, they weren't, they were all over the place and they, they collected them over years. But this one role they sent out and then they sent it to the wrong person on Twitter. And on Twitter, he just shifted the company. He wrote, what are our XYZ recruitment? Clearly don't read my CV. Um, quick response from their social media guy. And he, he said, look, fair play. Thanks for responding. That was, I didn't expect that. And kind of the mm -hmm. thumbs up. And it was like, simple as that. It's a bit like saying, why, when, yeah, when you fine. tell a candidate you're going to ring them back, ring them back. Same thing online. Yeah. It's exactly the same thing online. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and our a question from Elliot. So what are the best ways to track ROI on branding stroke content creation? Firstly, track, I'd track the assets that you're producing and have a timeline to milestones to hit. Run it like a project. So many, mm -hmm. so many agencies will do social media because they know they need to at this point. They know it's out there. They they hear it all the time and they produce stuff, whether it's a video or picture or snap in the bill as lunch. But there's no, there's no plan to it. There's no, there's no date that it's going in. There's no project behind it. So firstly, like anything you're going to do, like you're going to build a house, etc. You've got to have an end game and you've got to have milestones that you want to hit. So there's your immediate ROI. Yep. Um, and then it's about tracking, like I say, follower growth, engagement, impressions. We get, I mean, on our Oxo Media Instagram page, we've only been building it this year. We've got over 5,000 followers. We get about 9,000. So that's 9,000 yeah. unique people just on Instagram looking at what we do. And all of, our, all of our stuff comes from hashtags around the recruitment industry. So we can actually track and look through our followers. And there's, there's recruiters around the world on there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah there's, there's plenty of metrics you can measure by. Um, to begin with, I would look at the consistency of your input, um, unless you're spending millions, but your consistency of your input and look at the, the basic metrics of people that follow you, people that read your content. So for example, when I started off writing content in this year, I was getting four or 500 people that were viewing it. Now, like I say, an average post of mine will get 10,000 views, a good post 50 to 100,000 views. So that's clear ROI. And then I actually track Based on that, there's links back to our website and to other areas that we can see the journey of how people are moving through our content. Um, and it always, leads yeah. to, it always leads to people either picking up the phone or engaging. And then that's a lead, isn't it? Pick up the phone to that. 100%. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, thanks, very um, thanks very much for your time, Sean. I think we've um, we've covered off loads yeah. of good stuff there, and I think there's lots of value for um, people to take away. Just before we uh, wrap up, if you had, um, I guess, one bit of business advice when it comes to to branding uh, for the people that are on here, um, what would that be? Start now. Start now. Start very small. It's literally like saying you are twenty and you've got a pension or you've got. You've got to save money. People think, oh, I'll put it off. It'll happen. It'll happen. What, what are you waiting for? Do it now. Even if it's basic stuff, status updates on your LinkedIn. A couple of use, – use LinkedIn video. Last week they launched it. Now you can do a video. You can upload it natively from your phone. Talk about your thoughts. Talk about your opinions. You're all confident in standing in front of clients and pitching yourself. 
do it on your phone. Put it out there. See what people say. I, I guarantee you'll get a lot of people back in you saying, well done. They'll actually they'll yeah, respect you for faith. it. And it'll start with that. It's confidence. Yeah. Awesome. Brilliant. Sean, thank you very much thank for you. your time. Fully appreciate, appreciate it. it. Cheers, all buddy. the best. Thanks for everyone commenting and thanks for all the questions as well, guys. See you all soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. See you later.